as I said over the next few weeks, it's a fun look at Genesis. Um, there's a lot of things in Genesis that people just read through. And uh, as you can see, you know, you can spend weeks and weeks and weeks teaching on uh, just the first chapter of Genesis. Because uh, there's a lot of things in there that, that the average person just uh, passes by. Uh, but if you open up your Bibles, I'd like you to look with me again in Genesis chapter 1. And uh, we're, we're talking about creation. And uh, last week, we, we uh, on the sheet that you had before you, I, put, I pointed out that there was uh, probably five great people in the book of Genesis that need to, need to, you need to stress. But uh, what I wanted to do was set a foundation. There's foundations in the book of Genesis that we need to, to get founded as Christians. Because there's a lot of Christians that really don't have these foundations, and they need them. Because we have a world of false teachers out there yeah. that are beginning or have been for centuries now teaching things that they ought not, teaching things that are fables rather than truths. And many of them start here in the book of Genesis because of their, uh, let's put it this way, their inability to understand or their uh, wanting to somehow interject something into Genesis that's not there. And so in Genesis chapter 1, uh, verses 1 and 2, last week we began, or let's just look in verse 1, we'll, we'll, we're going to be there this morning again. It says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you again for this book. Thank you for the accuracy of scripture. Uh, the fact that we can look at words in the Hebrew and the Greek and understand exactly what you mean and what you're teaching. Open up our eyes and our ears to understand as we deal with cults, as we deal with people that are confused about uh, who you are, about who Jesus is, about your spirit. And uh, guide us, Lord, in this lesson and help us to have some fun with it. And uh, Lord, to, to uh, just look at things that need to be looked at. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. amen. Last week I looked at the creation. We talked about in the beginning, and we talked about in the beginning of time and life and the world. In other words, something started somewhere. God has to be the beginning of all things. Otherwise, the foundation of our, our belief system is flawed. Uh, we didn't we didn't crawl out of the ocean. We weren't set here by aliens. Basically, God created. And so Amen. we looked at that last week. And we talked about the word God. That the word God in the in the Hebrew is the word Elohim, and it's a plural noun, which means gods in the sense that God's created. God, one, God's created. Now what does that mean? It means that God uh, is three persons. That's right. Now, we understand this because of, of the full counsel of Scripture. In the Old Testament, a lot of the Old Testament saints did not understand what we understand. If they had understood it, you wouldn't have had a lot of the problems with the Jews as, as, uh, when Jesus came. But Jesus Christ came to fulfill and also to teach the truth about everything that we might understand that He was the Son of God. He was the creator of the world. He was God that became man. And so Elohim, I pointed out last week, Elohim and Jehovah are, are Old Testament, is an Old Testament uh, words that mean basically the self-existent one, that, that God doesn't need any help to exist. He was there in the beginning. He is the original cause of all things. And that's the important thing that we need to draw from this. And so I pointed out last week, as we came to, in the, in the middle of the sheet here, that um, the Bible says, God said, let us. And we looked at those two verses in Genesis 1, 26 and 11, 7 to kind of show you at the Tower of Babel that God came down, but he said, let us come down. Let us go down and look at what they're doing there at Babel. Let us, let us, meaning that there's more than one person involved in the creation of the world. And so... The Trinity is clearly taught, and I pointed that out last week, that we need to get a hold of that, that, that. If there's going to be a flaw in somebody's foundation, it's going to be in their disbelief of the Trinity. And last week we ended up with the fact that I put on the bottom of your sheet or take, for example, Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons and Muslims and evolutionists and New Agers and all these different guys. And uh, somebody asked last week or mentioned last week that Jehovah Witnesses 
Uh, you know, they go around and they knock at your door and they're trying to get you to, to uh, become a part of them. And, and uh, they sound legitimate. They look like angels of light. And they want you to believe their doctrine. They want you to, to somehow uh, see that the Catholic Church has corrupted all doctrine and, and that um, they, they're always attacking the Catholic Church, which, by the way, the Catholic Church is messed up. Yep. But they're always trying to somehow use some type of, of truth and twist it into a fable that you might be pulled away, if you would, from the truth of the Trinity. Yeah. Um, someone said last week, we talked about what a Jehovah Witness is. I don't want to spend a lot of time on the cults here because we can get off into all kinds of things and talk about yeah. them for, for days and days and days. But a Jehovah Witness, just like a Mormon or just like Islam or something of that nature, they have a problem with Jesus Christ being God. Yeah. And, and they come and they knock at your door and they try to get you to understand that they're the true prophets of God, that Jehovah is the real God, and that Jesus Christ was his son. And if you ask him, you, have, you can ask them a question, do you believe that Jesus is God? They will say to you, oh yes, but they're liars. Yeah. They're liars, and you need to tell them you're a liar. And when they come to your door, don't let them do all the talking. You do the talking. Yeah. Now here's why. See, Jehovah Witnesses believe that Jesus was created by Jehovah yeah. as Michael the Archangel. They do not recognize Jesus as God, but rather a distinct, separate creature. They, Je the Jehovah Witness believe that Jesus is a created being, that God created his firstborn son, who eventually became known as Jesus. And he had other sons, which are Satan and some of the others. And so what is he trying to do? Satan is trying to dethrone Jesus Christ That's right. down to the place of a created being. Now, by the way, the body of Jesus Christ, was that created? No. That came from somewhere. That was created by God, but it was created in the image of God in the sense that Jesus Christ, though he pre-existed, he had dwelt a body that was created on this earth through Mary, right? We know that to be a fact. But these people, these Jehovah Witnesses and these Mormons, they want to, to try to make Jesus out to be an angel. And what they try to do is try to get you to believe that there's something left out here in Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse 1, where it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. There's something that happened before that time that basically uh, has caused the, the God to do something different with mankind. Now what do I mean by that? They believe, now by the way, does the Bible tell us when angels were created? Mm -hmm. Think about that. Does the Bible tell us exactly? Now we know in Ezekiel they say that, that uh, Lucifer fell. We know that. But how much about angels does the Bible tell us about their creation? And, and we need to realize that what happens is that Satan wants us to look at things that are not taught in Scripture. Mm -hmm. And he wants to add to these things some type of meat so that you and I will be, be confused about this whole matter of creation. That somehow God isn't what he, what he says he is. Now, I asked last week, I said, how, what percentage of America do you think believes in God? Well, I was mentioning about 83%. But then I said, what God? Yeah. Mm. Very few people believe. By the way, we're new evangelicals and those of us that are born again, we're the only ones that really hold the truth of God. The Catholics even believe in the Trinity, by the way. Mm -hmm. Lutherans believe in the Trinity. Mm -hmm. But what we have is we have cults out there that, are, that believe differently and they want to dethrone Christ and they want you to be deceived by their deception. And it's all based on Genesis here. That somehow God had some race before the creation of the world. And everything happened. By the way, Satan was in the garden, wasn't he? Well, yeah. mm -hmm. How did he get there? Mm. You see what they do? They try to find places in Scripture where God isn't specific. And then they try to say, now if you ask a, a Jehovah Witness, they're going to say that... that uh, Jesus Christ and Satan and the angels were all created by God, and therefore they existed, and, and then God used Jesus Christ to create the world. If you talk to the Mormons, Mormons believe that 
All of us, everybody in this room, every human being on the face of the earth had a pre-existence with Christ before the foundation of the world. Does the Bible say that? Yet you go over to the Book of Mormon. What do they have to do? They have to add the Scripture. Yeah. You see how you see how this is this this can be so messed up because of the non-belief in the word Elohim that that Elohim is exactly God that the Son of God is exactly God that the Spirit of God is exactly God and they get their foundation all messed up if we don't have the foundation of the Trinity we have a messed up foundation and that's why these people are messed up yes I was going to say isn't that where the adding and subtracting comes into play where he says you will have all these things happen to you if you add or subtract any part of God's word. Right. God's very serious about that. And I, you know, I pointed out last week about Deuteronomy 26, 26, that if it's not written in the book, it's not meant for us to know. Yeah. And we have to be very careful to interject things in Scripture because we're adding to Scripture. And so be careful with that. So, by the way, the Jew, is the Jew messed up on the Trinity? Yeah. Who's Jesus Christ of the Jew? He's a good prophet. They don't even accept him as a legitimate prophet. Right. Good man. Yeah, he was a good man with good morals. But what did he do? He went against. I wrote down here that uh, he reject. They reject him as the Messiah and the prophet because he contradicted Jewish law and taught contrary to Moses. That's what they said. But we also know that he came to fulfill the law, did he not? And to add to truth, add to truth. And so, if you take the example of all these different cultic people out there, these uh, Muslims and, and who believe that Jesus Christ is, was, a, was a start and that Muhammad came to fulfill. I mean, then you got the book of Quran, which denies again the Trinity. They all deny the deity of Christ. And so, don't let these people... Uh, make you think that somehow they're on your side. Sure, they believe in God and sure they want to believe in some type of righteousness. And that's good. But when it comes to the truth, there are enemies for Christ's sake. Because they deny God himself. Uh, Allah is not the same God as Elohim. That's right. And Jesus Christ is, is a false prophet in many cases. So we have to be careful with these people. Uh, New Agers. New Agers want to come around and tell you that uh, that we came from uh, out there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that we all are a part of one. They're pantheistic in the sense that we're all a part of, of God. God is just, a, there's nothing wrong and there's nothing right. Boy, that's in our politics, isn't it? Yeah. So we see what's happening in our country. We see what's happening in our world because of the rejection of Elohim, because of the rejection of who God is here in the very first book of the Bible. Uh, Elohim, look on your sheet at the, at the bottom there. Elohim is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and they were all active in the creation process. Uh, and again, I mentioned to you that this is a truth that's not clearly taught, or wasn't clearly taught in the Old Testament, but we have the full counsel of Scripture. So God the Father, is he mentioned here in, in the beginning of the Bible? You bet he is. In the beginning, God. That's the word Elohim, God. And then if you read down, you'll see that in verse 7 that it's changed to what? God. God said, or the Lord God, excuse me. What we're finding here is God has, is the creator. Verse 1, verse 7, verse 16, verse 17, verse 21. I want you to turn over to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah quickly. And look at uh, verse uh, 45. Eighteen. He says, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be what? Inhabited. God made this earth to be inhabited. <coughs> And I am the Lord, and there is none else. God was very much a part in the creation. God the Father is the one who thought up the creation. He's the one who basically designed the creation. 
But then the creation of God was created by what? The Word of God. And that's important that we understand that too. Somebody read with her, read 11, Hebrews 11.3 11, for me as we the rest of us look at God the Son here for a minute. See, the Bible says, if you look at Genesis chapter 1 here, if you get to the point of verse 6, you see it says, and God said. You read that again in verse 9. The world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, which was the Jew, and his own received him not. But as many as received him to them, gave him power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. When, you're, when you have a Jehovah Witness knocking at your door, you have somebody out there trying to tell us that, that Jesus Christ is not equal to God. They've got a real problem with me. Yeah. And I don't let them talk. I say, listen, let, you just shut up for a minute and let me tell you what the Bible I want to hear your garbage. Well, it's not garbage. It is garbage. Shut up and listen to me. And that's exactly the way I talk to them. You say, well, that's mean. Well, no, it's not. They're a cult. They're trying to dethrone my Lord, and I want them to see scripturally that God is Jesus Christ. Look, if you would, over in Colossians chapter 1. You, if, I'll give you some verses here to use. Uh, John 1, Colossians 1, they're all in the first chapters. Hebrews 1. We as Christians need to prove from the scriptures that Jesus Christ is God. Verse 12. It says, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Now notice verse 15. This is important. Who is the image of the invisible God? What does that word image mean there? Do you ever study that out? That's why words are important. Words are very important. Image. It means the exact copy. When Jesus Christ came to this earth and you saw Christ, he was the exact copy of God. Exactly. Yeah. The eternal Son of God that existed from the creation of the world, that created the world with God the Father. He was the exact copy, the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power. All things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. <laughs> Man, I don't know how much fear. Yeah, but I, don't give me any of that garbage. Listen. Yes. And it also says, I and your father are one. Yeah. How, how do you deny that? How, you can go through the scriptures in many places, right? This is just a few. Look over to Hebrews. Hebrews is one of my favorites because by the time I get through Hebrews, they're ready to walk off the porch and I've got to chase them down the street. <laughs> <laughs> and then they point to your house when they go down your block next time. Get away from that. Stay away from that. <laughs> <laughs> Hebrews 1 Hebrews 1 just remember John 1 Colossians 1 Hebrews 1 easy way to understand this you know the Jehovah Witnesses have changed John 1 1 to say in the beginning was a Jehovah Witness a Mormon will, will try to teach you that Jesus is an angel okay now, these people that come to your door and they try to get you all confused, look what it says here in verse 4. He was made so much better than the angels. In other words, God right there separates him from an angel. He's not an angel. And he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For which of the angels did he say at any time, Thou art my son? See, it goes on to say all these things. But I want you to look over at uh, uh, verse 4. I mean... Uh, Let's see, that's... Uh, let's look at verse uh, 8. It says here, But unto the Son, he said, Thy throne, O God. So, what is, what is the Bible calling Jesus Christ here? God, Theos, the Supreme One. 
the Almighty is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God feels the Father, even thy God, hath anointed thee with oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, <laughs> wow, these are words that are tremendous. Lord, thou, Lord, supreme master, he calls him here, in the beginning you laid the foundation of the earth. They can't change that. We already know Jesus laid the foundation of the earth, right? And the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. And they all shall wax old as doth the garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall fail not. But the wish of, which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool? Wow. Elohim. Elohim. Well, I think we all understand who Jesus is. Amen. But let's, what about the Spirit? How did the Spirit work in here? Look over again. You want to see the Spirit in uh, Genesis 1? What's it say here? By the way, the Spirit of God is the power behind creation. The Father, God the Father is the one that decides all things. The Son speaks all things. The Spirit does all things. He's the, he's the, he's the, the means by which everything happens. Now, how do I know that? Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. And the earth was void, or and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. What was the Spirit doing? Sitting back and just kind of watching? What was he doing there? What's, what's moved mean? He was active. He was doing something. He was moving across the face of the waters. He was constantly doing that which the Word told him to do. Okay? Now, this is how we need to understand this. Genesis 1 2. Now, Psalm 104 30. Let's look over at Psalm 104 30. I looked up some verses that you might see this a little bit more clearly. Because a lot of people wonder why, you know, the Holy Spirit, He just keeps, He just is quiet. He's in the background. He doesn't do anything. By the way, He's inside us. But what's He doing? He's actively involved in doing something all the time. He's in constant communication, Romans 8, with the Father. You know, trying to, you know, at, you know, there's a communication going back and forth with the Spirit of God in me, talking about me, <laughs> which I like. I'm important to him. But it says here in 104, verse 30, he says, Thou sendest forth thy Spirit, and they are created and thou renewest the face of the earth. The Word of God, Jesus Christ, spoke what the Father's will was, and the Spirit did it. Boom. The Spirit was the active agent of creation. Now, Jesus made all things with the, with the power of his voice, but it was the Spirit that brought things to pass. Look at Job 26, 13. Go back to Job. He says there, by his spirit he hath garnished the heavens. His hand hath formed the crooked servant. Look at verse 33, chapter 33, verse 4 here. Who does it say the Spirit of God made? I thought it said God formed man out of the dust of the earth, right? And then he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. But what's this verse say? Verse 4. The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. God says create man. Jesus said man is created, the Spirit makes man. Now, that's the way it works. Now, you would say, well, Pastor, how, how do you know all this stuff? Well, he carries out God's plan. 
Salvation, John 3, 5, what happened to you? You need to be born of what? Water and? So who carries out salvation? Whose will is it? The Father's? Whose word has spoken the truth on the pages of this book? We respond by faith and the Spirit carries it out. Notice this. Who was it that baptized you into Christ? Says to me, I was baptized by who? The Holy Ghost. Into Christ. It wasn't Christ. That, it was baptized into Christ by the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, 3. He washes us in the blood of Christ. He does the act of regenerate generation. Who is it that wrote the word of God? Jesus spoke it. But it tells me that holy men of God moved as they were carried along by who? The Holy Spirit. You see the work of the Spirit? Creation of God is a wonderful thing when you think about it. He convicts man of sin. He draws man to God. And by the way, he resurrected Jesus. And who is it, Romans 8, that he's going to resurrect after Jesus? You're going to put my body in the ground, and it's going to decay and die. I, I hate even to think about it, but it's going to happen. But one day, the Spirit of God, Jesus is going to come back from heaven. The Father's going to tell Jesus, come for your saints. Jesus, the trump of God's... The dead are going to rise first. So how are they going to come out of the ground? Christ is going to raise his voice and say, arise, and the Spirit's going to raise men. Now, look at Romans 8. Look at Romans 8, 11. Let's, you think, sometimes people look at me like I'm kind of crazy. But I won't tell you anything that I don't read myself. Romans 8, 11. But the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. If, excuse me, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Isn't that neat? Creation, what a wonderful thing that God would do this. Now, when someone rejects, I got a statement at the bottom of the sheet. When someone rejects the scriptural teaching of the Trinity or the deity of Christ, their whole foundation is flawed. It's flawed from the very start causing the rest of their doctrine to be messed up. You talk to a Jehovah Witness, what do they believe about hell? Oh, it's annihilation. Nobody's going to go and burn there forever. And by the way, the, the story of, of Lazarus and the rich man, that's just a parable. Well, that's very convenient for you. But let me tell you something. There's a hell to be feared. There's a heaven to be won. There's a hell to be feared. Can you lose your salvation as, as Jehovah Witness? You bet, unless you're out knocking on doors, unless you're out doing, 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 you're going to lose it. Not in Christ. Yeah. Mormons, same thing. Go down the line with them all. False doctrines are based upon works, works, works. Ours is based upon Christ. Right? Turn your sheet over. We'll jump on the backside here just for a minute. So in verse number three here on page two, God created the heaven and the earth. He created it from ex nihilo. That's the Latin word that means from nothing. And I pointed out in Deuteronomy 29, 29, God existed before creation, and that's all God wants us to know. If he wanted us to know more, he would have revealed it. Every one of these cults tries to teach you that there was a preexistence somewhere before the creation of the world. Every one of them. Because what Satan does is he tries to put there that's not there. And if God wanted us to see it there, he would have said it so. My word and the word of my Father, the word of Jesus Christ is not flawed. It's perfect. It's forever settled in heaven. It's everything that I need to know and understand about what God wants me to know. So be careful with that. The world was without form and void. The Bible says that's called, in, in the Hebrew, it's called toho boho. It means it was shapeless and useless. Look at Job. We'll look at be the last one we'll turn to. Job 26, 7. The Bible says, He stretched out the north over an empty place, and he hanged the world or the earth upon what? God spoke, 
the world into existence. And it was without form and it was void and it was water. We're going to look at that. Before God even went to work at it, he created it. And by the way, the Bible says he created Genesis 1. It says, in the beginning, God created what? The heaven and the earth. We're going to look at the heaven because God created that first. You wonder where Satan came from? Here it is. It's all he wants us to know about. It's all he wants us to know about it. It wasn't, there wasn't a pre-existent, there wasn't some Adamic culture before God destroyed everything in the flood, and that's what they want you to believe. Listen, we'll dig a little deeper into it, but isn't it wonderful what's in Genesis? Just from the very beginning, one and two verses, there's so much in there, and I trust that uh, we'll, we'll finish up next time, okay? Let's have a word of prayer, and we'll, we'll go home. Or not go home, we'll get ready for the service. <laughs> Father, bless us as we... Uh, Go into the service this morning, view of Pastor Hallett, and thank you for what you laid on his heart. Speak to our hearts. May the Holy Spirit, uh, Lord, speak to us today. May we respond to what he wants us to do. Uh, take the word and apply it, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you have a few minutes before the preaching service begins. Thank you for being here today.